Hello, my name is Marcelo Amato, and uh, we are going to talk about uh, driving pressure and respiratory rate. It's all you need at the bedside. I don't have any important conflict of interest for this presentation. So the concept of driving pressure was launched uh, a few years ago in this paper and has been repeatedly confirmed in many recent publications and big uh, prospective data collection showing that the driving pressure from all ventilatory parameters is the best predictor of survival. Experimentally, this uh, link between driving pressure and ventilator-induced lung injury is very strong. We have shown in many experiments that uh, whenever we have any model of lung injury, like this one, produced only by very high tidal volumes and pressures in the ventilator for a few hours, we always have a very consistent relationship between driving pressures and lung histology. For instance, in both animals in both sides of this picture, they received a protective tidal volume, but because driving pressure was very different in these two groups of animals because of different peak choices, we had a very different uh, outcome. In pet studies, uh, we could also show the same thing, that even applying protective tidal volume, if our driving pressure was uh, lower, we had a decreased inflammation independently of the PEEP level. So driving pressure was much more important for lung inflammation than PEEP level per se or tidal volume. PEEP level is important because it indirectly implies in a different driving pressure. Another important topic is that in the recent years we could do do a good correlation between driving pressures and collagen production. So driving pressure has been implied also in collagen and fibrosis production. Okay, in the rest, recent years, um, there is uh, some publications talking about the importance of mechanical power. So the topic of this presentation is going to that uh, we are going to check if mechanical power can add a relevant information on top of the driving pressure computation. To calculate mechanical power, you need almost all ventilatory parameters to be uh, combined in this single formula. Uh, one important aspect of mechanical power is that a respiratory rate is a very important component. And uh, so, in the, this was a theoretical framework, and then not many uh, clinical data was uh, built uh, with this concept, but uh, some uh, <clears throat> studies have tried now to check the correlation between mechanical power and outcomes, like we did for driving pressure a few years ago. And then, these investigators, they could show that there is a correlation and the higher the mechanical power, the worse the prognosis of the patients. But uh, as you can see in this slide, the correlation is not that strong. If you compare using almost the same framework and the same uh, scale of analysis, we can find that the correlation between driving pressure and mortality is much stronger than power computations and mortality, even if you apply exactly the same scale as I'm doing now. So both graphs are having the same Y scale, but as you can see, if I increase my mechanical power, the mortality increment is much lower than for driving pressure. This per se, so I'm putting here uh, the curve of mechanical power on top of the driving pressure. So this graph is telling us per se 
that the correlation between driving pressure and mechanical power is driving pressure and mortality is much stronger than the correlation between mechanical power and mortality. And why this? I think because the concept of mechanical power was constructed with an analogy with thermodynamics, but our biological system is more complex and non-linear, which means that maybe some factors are more important than others. And it's not exactly the total energy that power that is the main effector of lung injury. Okay, to test this in a more consistent way, uh, we, we use the same population as uh, used in the New England publication and added a few more patients in the last years. So in total, we have almost 5,000 patients to do this analysis. And now we checked the following hypothesis. First of all, we elected the baseline risk model that uh, should be applied in a multilinear regression model because we would like to, uh, <clears throat> let's say, to isolate the ventilator parameters from the baseline disease. Then uh, we calculated the relative risks for all ventilatory variables, respiratory rate, tidal volume, driving pressure, peak, capital pressure. And as you can see, all the isolated ventilatory variables are here in this model, and driving pressure is the most relevant one. In fact, the two the only two relevant ones are driving pressure and a respiratory rate. All other variables were not important for us, independently important for survival. Okay, now if we summarize all these variables into a single variable, which is mechanical power, according to that formula, what do we have? Let's check. So, um, analyzing here. So mechanical power is slightly correlated with an important relative risk to survival. However, if I do now a multivariate model in which driving pressure is already inside, so I'm counting, so I'm putting the same model, all these variables plus the mechanical power, what I get? A non significant relationship. And what does it mean? It means that after accounting for the baseline, the, the basic variables, the single variables, so mechanical power is not adding a relevant information. This is very important, which means that I don't have any additional information by computing mechanical power, which means that I can work only with single variables to predict survival. And among these variables, I would collect only the two significant ones because I believe that this model is going to be much more useful at the bedside. So driving pressure plus respiratory rate. Okay. And just to check uh, if uh, any of the uh, subcomponents of power could be important, not at all. So only taking the single variables, I have everything I need to predict, predict the prognosis of the patient. Uh, just to illustrate those, these relationships, if I take piles of driving pressure and check the correlation with mortality, I see a very strong correlation. If I take the quintiles of power, checking for the correlation with survival, or to mortality, I don't see a relevant combination. So just uh, computing driving pressure is much more relevant than computing power. So if I take now driving pressure and respiratory rate, both are significant and they add combined a very important and relevant information, best predictors. And just confirming uh, an, uh, 
a previous observation, if I take driving pressure and tidal volume, tidal volume does not add anything. So only driving pressure is giving us the picture, the relevant picture. So we did a mediation analysis taking into account all these variables and we tested if uh, after accounting for driving pressure and respiratory rate, if the addition of power or tidal volume could improve a little bit our analysis. And as you can see, not at all. I can just ignore these two variables and stay only with driving pressure and respiratory rate. I have all the information I need to predict the prognosis of the patient. Something very important. The effect size of driving pressure is four times stronger than the effect of respiratory rate, which means that a change in driving pressure is going to be four times more important than a change in respiratory rate. And then if I ask myself this question, is it worth to decrease tidal volume by 20% or driving pressure by 20% at the expense of increasing the respiratory rate by 20%? The answer is going to be absolutely yes, because driving pressure is much more important. So if I need to increase a little bit the respiratory rate to decrease driving pressure, I should do it. I don't have time to explain the proof of this concept, but we did many computations to check this assumption. And it was always true that increasing uh, the respiratory rate, but a decrease a little bit of the driving pressure would be beneficial. Okay, so jumping to the conclusions. Is it worth to decrease driving pressure by 20% if I needed to increase the respiratory rate a little bit? Yes. And the power computations do not bring us any additional information. So, final conclusions. For each patient, there is an optimal combination of respiratory and driving pressure that minimize risks. The ideal respiratory rate is usually a little bit above 35 in severe ARDS. I didn't have time to show this, but it's a logical conclusion for this, from these calculations. And then, uh, a third important conclusion, extreme reduction of uh, tidal volume is of utmost importance when compliance is very low. Why? Because any tiny reduction in tidal volume is going to produce a big drop in driving pressure. And the final one, when compliance is high, maybe tidal volume is slightly above six could be beneficial improving synchrony without risks of ventilator-induced lung injury. So these are the logical conclusions of this analysis, and this paper is going to be published very soon. Thank you very much.